At this point, let me take you to the range with the Smith & Wesson model 686. I do prefer shooting any cartridge through a 357 Magnum chamber with 357 Magnum case dimensions, even if the ammunition is loaded to 38 Special or plus P velocities. I know that doesn't make sense to some, but I have some reasoning that is beyond the scope of this article. This Smith & Wesson model 686 really likes 125 grain jacketed hollow point, as much as it does standard 38 special, 158 grain semi wide cutter hollow point. It is more accurate than I am, but I could still qualify expert in a police force qualification and could probably still outshoot some semi automatic operators with it. Although I would have to improve my speed loading skills. From a combat distance of 7 yards to 25 yards, you should have no problem keeping things within the nine ring if you do your part. The flash cap, the gap between the face of the cylinder and the forcing cone of the barrel, was measured at somewhere around 0.001 inch. But it is still wise that shooters keep their digits away from the front of the cylinder when firing the revolver. With full load 357 Magnum being fired, the muzzle flash can be quite intense. Felt recoil from a 125 grain jacketed hollow point in 357 Magnum loading can be intimidating for someone not used to the cartridge, and to some that are. Felt recoil is very snappy and requires a full, strong grip to control it. Even with the provided rubber grips, the recoil comes straight back into the hand, and the open back strap of the grip puts the stainless steel back strap of the revolver straight into the palm of the hand. Using a high thumb over gripping technique can mitigate the felt recoil to a point while controlling muzzle flip. Depending on the ammunition and firearm, shooting the 357 Magnum can be an enlightening experience in that the cartridge produces an impressive fireball at the muzzle end called muzzle blast when the bullet leaves the end of the firearm and also at the forcing cone or side blast. It should be obvious that when firing a revolver, the support hand should be well away from both muzzle and cylinder areas, regardless of caliber. At the range, the Smith & Wesson Model 686 ruled the day. There were no FTFs, FTEs, as found in semi-automatics. There was double strike capability, but none was needed. The Smith & Wesson Model 686 felt very good in the hand and is open for business. A break-in period is not required.